I want to welcome you to our 100th, can you believe it, 100th recorded YouTube services. When COVID began, we had stopped our worship for one week, we did drive up communion, and then we came up with this wonderful idea of coming in, having a small group of people coming in during COVID to produce a recorded YouTube service. And on this Good Friday, we have now done 100 of these. May God bless the ministry we have here. May God bless Amy and Joel Gusky for being with me through almost every one of those. May God bless my wife Sherry for being here, for Pat Driz helping us out, and all the other people that contributed to our 100 recorded YouTube services. And on this Good Friday, please keep in mind what happened on this day. I always wondered why they called it Good Friday. What's so good about it? Well, I understand that better now than I did back then. So during this sad day, we will talk about Pilate's choice. So let us open this worship service by listening to some prelude music by Amy Gusky. Amy? <laughs> Thank you for the prelude, Amy. For the invocation today, please read along with me with the words at the bottom of your screen. O oh Lord, you are love, and you know our every need. You see our suffering, the injustice put upon us, and the misery in the world. Look with mercy upon us. Help us to know and to understand the true need for compassion. Give to us your blessings and forgiveness of our sins. Make us merciful and let us follow your divine examples of forgiveness. Fill us with the simplicity of your divine purpose. Amen. And now for some scripture readings by Sherry Lasinski. The first scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 1 through 12. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head 
and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. And the next scripture reading is from Mark chapter 15, verses 16 through 24. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail the king of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put him, his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. And there ends the reading of the word. Our hymn of praise is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. The words will be on your screen. Please sing along with this beautiful hymn.
for our prayer time during this Good Friday service, it is a responsive prayer. I will read a short statement, and then I'll look at you or point to you, and your response is, Holy God, have mercy upon us. And that will be printed at the bottom of the screen so you remember. Again, your response is, Holy God, have mercy upon us. Will you pray with me? God called to us. He said, O people, O my church, what have you done and how have you offended my commandments? Holy God, have mercy upon us. God shares with us. He said, I have led you out of Egypt and delivered you to the promised land. Holy God, have mercy upon us. God tells us, I have sent my one and only son to sacrifice his life upon a cross for you. Holy God, have mercy upon us. Jesus wandered in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights and suffered temptation and came forth to begin his ministry. Holy God, have mercy upon us. May the peace of God give us, give us to be present in our lives. And may all the actions we do be in Christ's image. Holy God, have mercy upon us. May we never deny Jesus as our Lord and Savior as Peter did. May we never doubt Jesus' resurrection as Thomas did. And may we always remember his sacrifice for us. Holy God, have mercy upon us. We lift up to you those that are in need of your care. We hold in our hearts those who we wish to share with you in this silent moment of prayer. Now, dear Lord, hear our prayers as we pray together the prayer that Christ taught us using the word trespasses. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Pilate had choices. Despite assertions to the contrary, many Christians put their faith in the world where power and authority seems to be attained through the acquisition or the manipulation of resources. These resources can be material. These resources can be informational. These resources can even be ideological. And these resources are lorded over others as a mean of managing their behavior. Even those of us who see ourselves as being in resistance to these power st structures do so in a manner that is often mirrored the expression of those whom we are in contention with. It is the way of the world, and this struggle is called a power struggle. Pilate and the Jewish religious leaders in Jesus' day were in a power struggle. Both of them believed that they were authorized to determine the fate of Jesus. Pilate's authority came from the great Roman Empire, came from Caesar, and the religious leaders believed that their power came from God. But in truth, both were powerless. In truth, both were powerless. If they were able to admit their own powerlessness, perhaps they would have been able to recognize the true power expressed right before them in the very eyes and the very ways of Christ. If they were able to admit their own powerlessness, perhaps they would have seen Jesus' power. Many of us live in this tension in our daily lives. We live struggling from the power of the world that says exist and the power of Christ. So how do we reconcile the way of Christ with the way of the world? Well, the short answer to that question is we cannot. Let me repeat that. The short answer to that question is we cannot. We must choose. Every day, we are faced with Pilate's choice in some way. It is the choice between love and fear. It is the choice between Christ's way, from which true power comes, and the way of the world. It is a choice between eternal life and death. Which do you choose? Are you struggling with these choices? Are you struggling, fostered by fear, and uplifted 
by faith in Jesus? What are you struggling with? Pilate had a choice. We have a choice. What do we choose today on this Good Friday? How do we choose it today? What will we choose during this whole remaining season of Lent? What do we choose for our lives? What is your choice? Now let's look at the cross. The essence of Good Friday is the cross. In our scripture reading from the Gospel of Matthew, we learn that Simon was pulled from a watching crowd and forced to help Jesus carry the cross. Mark tells us that Simon came from Cyrene, a big city in North Africa, and with a large Jewish population. Most likely, Simon had journeyed to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And there we find Simon in the middle of a large group of people for an unjust execution. But he was able to perform a small but meaningful act to assist Jesus on this day. Earlier in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus told his followers, whoever wants to become my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. On the road to Golgotha, Simon literally did what Jesus figured to ask his disciples to do. He took up the cross given to him and carried it for Jesus' sake. We too have crosses to bear. We too perhaps have an illness that we must suffer through. We too probably have a challenging assignment laying before us. We too may have just challenges with our loved ones. And we too have been persecuted for our faith. We often try to point people to Jesus, to point people to his suffering for us, and to point people, most especially, to the cross. But we are met with blank-looking faces. It was Jesus' cross that gives us the strength. It was Jesus' cross that gives us the peace to talk to others. Jesus' sacrifice on a cross gives us peace with God and strength for our own journey. On this Good Friday, always look toward the cross. Always center yourself on the cross and remember the suffering that he did for us. So my friends, what crosses are you going to bear and carry for Jesus? And how can you use your struggle to point others to Jesus Christ? What choices are you going to make in your life and what crosses are you going to bear for Christ? Will you pray with me? O oh God, who is the source of our power, be with us in the choices we make this day. Be with us on this Good Friday. Remind us that the only choices that we make with you are to enduring values, and that is when we can admit our weaknesses and that we have the greatest access to your strength through your suffering for us. Oh Jesus, thank you for your understanding. Thank you for sympathizing with our pain. We can experience your strength when we take up our cross and we follow you. Give us the courage, give us the strength, even when our journey is difficult. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Our closing hymn for this Good Friday service is, Were You There? It will be signed by Sandy Stark. The words will be on your screen. Please sing along, Were You There? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, 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 sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to
Thank you, Sandy. And let us close with just a couple of announcements on this Good Friday service. First off, Easter Sunday. Join me at 6 o'clock in our parking lot, and we'll walk down to the beach for a short sunrise service. Last year, I think we had eight people from our church, and two people that were walking on the beach joined us, so we ended up with a total of ten. I would like to have another ten people come out that morning. Again, 6 o'clock. Walk down to the beach. The sun is supposed to rise at 633 a.m. And after that at 9.30, we have our live streaming worship service here on Easter Sunday. We'll be in the chapel. You can view us on YouTube during the service or any time after that. But please remember to come out on Easter Sunday and celebrate that our Lord was risen on that day. And let us celebrate that blessed news. And remember, we are all in this together. May God bless you on this Good Friday. This concludes our Good Friday service.